All right, so welcome to part two. So if you're looking for more of a what's in the box or a general overview for the Saiga SPS by Toki Marui, go ahead and check out my other video. I'll put a link in the description below or the title card in the top left hand corner where you'll be able to click on that video and just get a sense of, um, you know, out of the box impressions, what the SPS is like. This video is more based around um, how does it actually perform on the field, things that you need to consider for a use case, um, as well as just answering the question that a lot of people are gonna probably be asking me after we post this video is, hey, is the SPS going to replace the MWS as my primary? More to come on that later. So first and foremost, what I wanna go over is just the overall fit, function, and feel of the SPS. Um, have this kitted out, went over that in my previous video, so I won't be covering that today, but really like one of the standout features as a gas blowback enthusiast, um, and this one really scratch scratches that itch, is that this thing has a ton of recoil. Um, got a ton of videos of this thing just absolutely rocking when it's on full auto, even semi-auto. So that's something that, that really scratches your itch as an airsoft player. From what I've seen and from what I've tested so far with the AK, um, the MWS, a uh, couple of VFCs, that sort of thing, I mean, this is really up there in terms of recoil. Haven't really been able to compare it to something like a GHK, but I did shoot a uh, Wii AK side by side and they're both very hard hitters when it comes to just recoil impulse alone. So enough about the recoil, this thing kicks like a mule and it's awesome, I love it. Moving on to some of the things that I've thought about in terms of use case for the SPS, um, there's a couple of functions that I had kind of envisioned when first purchasing this. Initially, I was thinking, hey, this would be a, as weird as it sounds, hey, this would be a great secondary, strap it on, have a try shot. Um, fold this down like that, get one of the shorter magazines and figure out a way to mount it on the belt. Um, that would be one mean little package as a secondary. As time went on, uh, came to my senses and realized it's probably not the greatest idea and it'd be very difficult to pull off as well. Um, so started looking at some additional options. So within our group, uh, one of the other guys picked up just a regular tri-shot Saiga um, from Tokyo Marui. Had a ton of fun with that thing and I was like, absolutely sold. And I realized that this thing is actually more accurate than you would imagine for a tri-shot. Each one of these barrels is individually hopped, albeit it isn't an adjustable hop unit, but each barrel is individually hopped. And so you are able to get a ton of range out of this. So that really opened my mind to kind of the possibilities for this being more of maybe an intermediate skirmisher versus just a close quarters only, like your typical pump action um, try shots. So that got me thinking like, hey, if this thing is on full auto, it shoots three BBs at a time. What about putting, you know, getting rid of this gas magazine, putting in a HPA adapter here, having 80 rounds of tri shot on tap at any given time, uh, being able to just kind of carry these mid cap magazines around and just have them within the standard kit. Got me thinking like, hey, would a tri shot actually keep people's heads down when we're talking about suppressive fire? Because oftentimes, You'll be around a corner, you'll be trying to lay cover fire on a corner, and they'll challenge peek you, and so you have to be on top of your game laying down heavy fire to keep their heads down. Let me tell you, this was an absolute beast during game day, and I wasn't on the receiving end, obviously, of my own rifle, but... Oh, oh my fucking god! Uh, from initial impressions, it did seem like people were less likely to try to challenge you if they saw three BBs streaking across um, with tracer and flash. And it might be my bias confirming this, but it just seemed like a lot of people were not wanting to be on the receiving end of this, and that's exactly what I intended. So. During game day, I really approached it with the mindset that, hey, this is gonna be a squad support weapon. I know, short package here, um, not really what you think, but it's pretty handy, easy to maneuver, easy to get into position, lay down cover fire, um, break contact, join back up with the squad, that sort of thing. The only problem with this use case though, even with HPA, I was absolutely tearing through my canister. 
Um, so this thing is a 90 cubic inch, 4,500 PSI. Um, I'm sure they make them bigger. This is about as large as I can fit within my map pack on the back of my plate carrier. Um, so I wouldn't really feel comfortable going much larger than this. After just two games, I think I was down to about a thousand PSI from the get-go. Um, it was going through just enormous amounts of BBs as well. Went through an entire bag of BLS BBs within two games. So this thing is very expensive to run if that's something that you wanna do from a squad support standpoint. Also, the magazines are, are quite large. Covered a little bit of this in the previous video, but I'll, I'll recap it here. It's gonna be difficult to take these 30 rounders, place them in a plate carrier, place them on your belt and have enough for a good game. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's gonna be pretty tough running around with a bunch of these huge, huge gas magazines. Just by comparison to like an M4 mag here, um, I mean, couple inches, difference obviously it's thicker it's just a very large magazine so just keep that in mind if that's something that you want to use for a cqb environment as well i really do think this thing is best suited with hpa in my opinion if you can get away with maybe three or four of these magazines on your plate carrier or on your chest rig and it works for you um, you guys have short game modes. I think this would be a great CQB gun as well. Jury's still out. Um, I have some testing, more testing that I'll want to do with that use case, but from a squad support standpoint, really great, kind of expensive though. All right, so the moment you guys have been waiting for, is the SBS going to be replacing my MWS as my primary? Sadly, no. The SBS is definitely one of the most fun guns I've ever shot, and it's going to be in heavy rotation, don't get me wrong. Um, you'll probably see a lot more of this on the channel at moving forward, um, but just the issues of going through so much ammo, so many magazines, having to constantly refill this tank. Um, luckily, we have the facilities to stay on top of that, so it will be in heavy rotation. But I would not necessarily recommend this as a first purchase or an only purchase for somebody looking at gas blowbacks. Uh, the MWS still kind of reigns supreme in that. Uh, it's really good, you know, jack of all trades, tool that can do a lot of different things, um, obviously, and there's the cross training aspect as well. But the, uh, the SBS, it's definitely going to be in heavy rotation. So you'll see a ton more of this on the channel. Really excited for what we're going to be able to do um, with the Saiga SBS. So more to come on that front. So overall, would I recommend somebody going out uh, with their hard-earned money and purchasing a Saiga SBS? Look, if you've gone through my video, you've listened to a couple of the use cases, you've listened to a couple of the issues, and this is still something that's gonna work for you and your field, I could not hesitate and recommend this to somebody if those use cases fit exactly um, how your play style is, the field limits, all of those different things. However, hey, if you need a one gun kind of fits all, uh, you don't have the ability to, you know, have as many gas blowbacks, um, the MWS, I still think, is one of the best platforms to pick up, as well as the AK MWS. That's a great platform as well. So I'd stick to those. If the use case fits or you have the ability to own multiple gas blowbacks for different types of environments, could not recommend the SBS enough. It is a really, really fun gas blowback. Um, and there's just a ton of people and their reactions. My fucking God. God. So this, when they hear that on the field and just a ton of like responses that I've gotten for people that have come over um, and shot the gun themselves. I mean, this thing is a monster when it comes to gas blowbacks. So I hope that was insightful for you guys. Um, hope this video was fun. Wanted to put together something a little bit more special. Um, than usual, spent a lot of time putting this video together, trying to capture B-roll, just trying to get a good sense um, for this SPS as an initial review. There'll be a long-term review coming up uh, in the next year or so. So just keep an eye out for that. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more. Um, try to keep this content coming for you guys. 
Really appreciate it. Tried to do a try shot for 3K, so appreciate you guys watching and subscribing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Want to hear your thoughts on whether or not the SPS is something that you'd pick up. Um, but until next time, guys, we'll see you on the field.